Greetings and salutations, all you lovely individuals. Welcome back to Bleak Run Block. My name is Aaron. We got a fun one, or maybe a little bit of a traumatizing one for you, depending on what school of thought you are, because we're going back and looking at some of the most broken champions in the history of pro play obviously we got a whole lot of games and data to go off of but we're looking specifically at pro play not what was an absolute menace to you in solo queue we're looking at how it impacted the pro players this is a combo of you know a champion on release being completely unplayably busted versus champions that have been at the very forefront of the most picked in the meta for multiple seasons years some of them even half of the games existed so a nice combo of everything before we get to the actual list a couple honorable mentions champions like both senna and orn basically infinite scaling champions that have been played across multiple roles we've seen orn jungle orn top orn mid senna pivots as both that ad carry and support that affects entire team comps but they're not quite busted enough to actually get on this list even though they were so frequently picked opposite of that a champion like Zin Zhao who if you are an OG league gamer going a decade plus back when this champion was originally released he was insanely busted people were getting pentakills left right and center but he's not on this list because number one that effect never really made it to pro play because number one this is like 2010 this dude was released there hardly was a professional scene and he's an interesting one because it was mainly his numbers were just completely out of whack out tuned it wasn't champion kits weren't so insane in 2010 they were pretty simple press q after three hits somebody gets knocked up you have a slight dash there was nothing crazy about these kits it was his numbers that were absolutely insane but still not enough to crack what we're calling our top eight and this begins with another champion who was completely brain dead busted on release and that is leblanc who had bugs you could double tap her q so she was getting easy solo kills at level three but she more than maybe any champion on this list is an ultimate item abuser we can go back to death fire grasp as a shout out where she was completely one tap and supports and really not even just supports any squishy in the game uh historically she's gone through many different reworks especially on how her q interacts again for the ogs you remember civ hd videos doing some jukes with the clone and the w and r uh, interactions on her but even when you remove deathfire grasp and go to the more modern era more recently static shiv became completely busted on her and all of a sudden we're getting 80 carry leblanc but she's a champion that is her power level seems to be directly related to item power level and what's busted what fits into her kit and she's survived multiple reworks multiple different metas even when assassins have been gone from the meta for so long she is that one assassin slash control mage that time and time again we see and she finds herself getting back into the meta and also the only champion that faker actually has a professional pen to kill on so shout out to leblanc for surviving in this meta for a decade plus you know this list is going to be filled with a lot of newer champions the first one to talk about is mr viego who on release was completely out of control he eventually got tuned back he's still a staple in the meta but isn't as broken as he was uh but obviously some of the some of the gameplay clips specifically owner and inspired i think are the ones that stand out for hopping in getting these resets on different champions at least the um you know skill cap is incredibly high for this champion because you've got to know how to play multiple champions that aren't even in your role if you're a jungle main um and i think early on when he was first getting released you were seeing him in solo lanes somewhat infrequently just because he was so insane you had to get him on the rift in some way shape or form but he pretty quickly settled in to just that jungle specific role but i mean being able to get four extra abilities from different champions obviously he might still have the highest ceiling 
for being able to take over an entire team fight out of any of the champions on this list just because he has that potential uh, to, I mean, get four layers of CC or get some high DPS on all these champions he's able to pick up. Maybe the craziest interaction um, I think that he has specifically with a lot of these other champions is not actually someone he can pick up. It's the Renata Glass combo uh, and the bailout that you can basically pop his passive, take over somebody, and then get uh, the Renata Glass uh, bailout. The way it interacts with his passive is just one of the most broken things in the game with an already broken champion like Viego. Uh, so that combo in itself, absolutely insane. But at least Viego got reeled in a little bit after uh, the initial absolute terror that he laid on the Rift during his first year or so of being released. That's why he's not higher on this list because he did get tuned back a little bit. But still, one of the most terrifying champions to match up against. Even more terrifying is when you can do things like Viego, but a couple of screens away. And we're now six plus years since the release of Zoe in the mid lane. And if you were watching uh, 2018, probably the peak, I think that's when she was actually released. She was picked every which way. She was. She had the sixth highest presence of any champion, any role in 2018, and was rocking a 54% win rate while being in the game that often. Uh, so that, number one, speaks to how insane she was. But I think the biggest issue with Zoe was the low level of interactability that opposing champions could have against her. There's there's a couple clips that you could see where she's not even landing the Sleepy Trouble bubble. She's just one-shotting with the Paddle Star on 80 carries. It's not even a support. If the screen is big enough away, you don't even see her coming. You don't even have time to react. You actually, we overthrow, overuse the term one-shot, but a one-shot is actually just one ability taking you from 100 to zero. Zoe remains pretty much the only champion, maybe a Vigar ulti, but mainly Zoe, the only champion able to do that. She does it from two screens away, and it's an AoE ability, so you could basically one-shot three people at the same time. That's before we're even talking about the passive on her W. How many plays did we see of guys collecting three, four, five, six flashes throughout a team fight, hopping, dancing around the fight, stealing items as well? Uh, there were... This is another champion that had to get eventually nerfed into Oblivion and just completely reworked because just being able to walk into lane, pick up a redemption, use it on your lane partner, force a flash out of them, double flash to get them a kill. There was so many issues with Zoe, but number one was not being able to interact because these poke comps happen two screens away and then uh, the passive being able to basically get an infinite amount of flashes. I think... The fact that this was a little girl that was actually a thousand years old, uh, and I feel like that's where the thousand years meme kind of started because she's supposed to be, you know, an ancient soul who's like a thousand years old, but looks like a little girl who's absolutely destroying you on the rift, which she did many times for many players across uh, the global scene. So happy to not have zoe at the forefront of the meta anymore because that was just not a fun time to watch and not a fun time for anybody to be interacting with number five most broken champion is one that's been around for a long time hasn't been as featured in the meta as often as some of the other guys and champions on this list but Cassidin is another one of the original terrors on the Rift, going back to the Expeke backdoor era many years ago. Another one that's been reworked a couple of times, but when he is in the meta, uh, Cassidin is a must ban. There were times during his absolute heyday that he was rocking a 95-ish percent ban rate, which is absolutely insane. And how many times... Even more recently, the last couple of years, whether it's Showmaker or Faker or other world-class mid laners, you talk about the timer. At the same level that we talk about Kale reaching level 16 and the game is over, it's even more prominent when you're talking about Cassidy and saying, oh, he gets that level three ulti and he's 
got a dash every two seconds and he's nuking entire back lines it's 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 an entire comp and you know that the opposing team is looking at that same ticking time bomb saying we got to close this game before Cassidy even reaches level 16 because then the game's over because he's so unbelievably broken when it comes into the late game uh, with his hyper mobility and able to just dash in assassinate the carries dash back out never get killed thank god you can't have the stopwatch and the zanya's double golden hour uh because that's when he was at his absolute most lethal but again you're going back to like season three when x peke was taken over a couple of uh 2015 2016 you had faker was the one taken over on this pick there's so many different eras where he's been absolutely lethal he's not a mainstay in the meta per se but again when he is featured, uh, he is one of the most terrifying champions to match up with uh, on the Rift because of that level 3 Rift Walk. Even when it was a less complicated, convoluted version back in like 2013, he was still absolutely terrifying to match up against and was the focal point to put behind early. And more often than not, he picks up a kill or two in the mid game and it doesn't matter. The game is over because this guy is going to scale into oblivion and completely take over the game. Maybe one of the most difficult champions in terms of reworking. And it's not Rise. Rise, you could talk about maybe being on this list, but it, it's rare that he's been completely busted. He's been in the meta for many years. I feel like initially when his ulti was uh, Chain Lightning bouncing back and forth is maybe when he was the most broken. But I would never call him broken throughout the years. Akali, on the other hand, has definitely been broken. She is no stranger to having over a 52, 53, 54% win rate in the pro play you can play her top you can play her mid and i think when the initial rework that brought in her new shroud that dropped turret aggro probably when she was peak levels of absolutely broken and even in the modern day uh maybe her win rate isn't as insane as it was uh in the years past but still even when you fall behind as, as an Akali, the truth is if you land your combo, if you land the shuriken into your ulti, you're blowing up anybody that that hits, even if it's a tank, if it's a, if it's a 80 carrier support, you're getting in the back line, completely blowing somebody out. And more often than not, you're escaping with your life because that shroud is still so unbelievably insane. The playmaking potential for this champion is it's at an S++, which is why when you see guys like Chovy, guys like Knight piloting this pick, it's an absolute treat to watch, but it's kind of, she's kind of a pick that even when she's not completely broken, when she's been nerfed one, two, three, four, five times by Riot, She's always someone that's going to have her hover on the outside of the meta, especially for some of these players that she's a bit of a pocket pick for. Uh, and it feels like this rework, again, kind of removed one of her main weaknesses, which was the landing phase. She got this sustain on her Q uh, to have to be able to survive in some of these ranged matchups, whether it is mid lane or top lane. So it felt like this rework kind of took away a lot of her, those preserved uh, perceived weaknesses that she was supposed to have uh, in that top side or in that early game at the very least. So another one that survived many, many, many different metas and is still a fallback pick for, I mean, look at a guy like Zeka to fall back on that Akali as well. She is still always hanging out in that near top of the meta in League of Legends. Top three is where things start to get really out of control. All three of these picks are champions that at one point or another completely took over the meta, were absolute focal points, either must ban or must build your entire team comp around. And we start with the classic, the certifiable Zeri moments. Uh, I mean, the biggest stat you can talk about for Zeri comes in pentakills. She has the third most pentakills in the history of the professional scene. 92 different pentakills. Only Jinx and Kaisa have achieved more pentas in the competitive scene than Zeri. And she was released in 2022. It's barely been two full years that this champion has been out and she already has the third most pentakills. 
multiple players across multiple regions. You were drafting entire comps. It was either Yumi or Lulu just pick an enchanter support to slash follow this Zeri around. And even if everyone else is dead and it's just the 80 carrying support alive, she's probably going to win. She went through multiple different builds where she ended up, you know, this full tanky bloodthirst trinity force where Riot tried to fix things. She's been nerfed so many times because she was the most banned champion throughout all of season 12, which was her first uh, year on the professional scene. As I mentioned, entire comps being built around this champion because she was so unbelievably busted, especially when you had world-class players like Ruler, Pays, Elk, these different picks able to just, you're able to say, well, our AD carry is going to be better than yours. And now he's got Zeri, so he's definitely going to have a better, bigger impact than you. And I feel like a lot of teams rode the Zeri pick to a lot of victories that maybe they shouldn't have been having. But because they got this unbelievably broken, busted pick, they were able to take over uh, and... Some of the early uh, clips of Zeri where she had this absolutely ludicrous movement speed that looked like a bug. It looked like you're playing Earth or something that she was running around the rift. It took the, it took a long time for Riot to even narrow in on, you know, in PBE to get her to the state that she was at in release. And then they basically had to hotfix her because she was so broken even after all this tinkering. So a champion that continues um, to evolve always and i think people hold their breath when she does slowly slip back into the meta because she is such a terrifying prospect to match up against in that bot lane slightly less terrifying than peak 200 years 2020 affilios the uh, origin of the meme of those 200 years and uh with good reason there were so many games I talk about Zeri, you know, teams picking up wins just because they have the Zeri pick. Aphelios was stealing wins and team fight wins that absolutely no other champion in the game in the history of ever would be winning. The Infernum ulti, Infernum guns were when he was, were the most broken thing about him. Uh, but the Severum and amount of lifesteal that he got as well. I mean, there's a couple of plays where... Even the casts, you heard them, they're getting upset casting Aphelios games because it was so disgusting. He was the second most picked champion of any role in 2020, and he still had a 55. 55 is absolutely insane for a win rate percentage when you're the second most picked champion in the scene. He was completely out of control that year. 1v4 turnarounds, entire teams engaging on him, and... If he had the Severum up, it didn't even matter. What's craziest is during this 2020 era, guys hadn't even figured out how to properly rotate the guns, how to play this champion to its maximum potential. People are way better at playing Aphelios now than they were when he was originally released. But it's not as terrifying because his numbers have been so tuned back. His numbers were so out of control, not even playing him properly. You still felt like this champion was absolutely busted. Yes, there's still uh, some players who are a lot better than others in terms of juggling which gun to have. Sometimes you're seeing people stuck on, you know, red, purple in these team fights, not looking so good. But more often than not, the truly world-class Avelios players have the right guns at the right time for the right scenario. He was also a case of, I think, other players not understanding what he could do. I know I could... When he's shooting you two screens away with the green caliber gun and then snaring you, and there were a lot of things to understand. Early on, they didn't showcase what his guns were or what was coming up next, so you were extra confused matching up against him. This is a champion that's continued uh, to develop, but no question in 2020, this was one of the most broken champions that we have ever seen on the, wrist, on the list and on the rift. Number one, though, maybe it's a little bit of recency bias, but... I think everybody and their grandmother is tired of seeing Cassante take over games. All you really need to do here to play this clip is show Mr. Showmaker with his famous copy pasta absolutely losing his mind ranted about Cassante. He's kind of the evolved version of Orn because, you know, we used to always joke about Hunter be or Orn being a tank 
mage, assassin, bruiser, 80 carry frontline. He does everything. Cassandre does everything and a little bit better. You can play him mid, play him top, force him into whatever role you want because he's just that broken. He's dealing the most damage in the game, building full tank in some of these matchups. He's diving in 1v4, killing an AD carry and surviving with 50% health, just walking away. So many different things with this guy. Seemingly infinite dashes. He's never low on mana because everything costs so little. He's got maximum types of CC. He can drag you across an entire wall. He's been the most picked champion in season 14 with a 55% win rate. That's even, he's more picked than Aphelios was in his peak year and has a similar level win rate. And he's coming off of 2023 where he was the second most picked champion. So you thought the meta might change coming into the new year with him, but he continues to be not just the premier pick when it comes to the top lane, but the premier pick when it comes to absolutely any role because he's that unbelievably broken on the rift and I, I mean his kit is I think you compare it to a Felios or Viego it's not that insane in terms of just raw power scratching your head levels of confusion on how his kit even works it's more just the combination of like Orn, as I mentioned, being unbelievably tanky, but still doing crazy amounts of damage. There's not even a damage build that I've seen anyone do for Cassante because it doesn't make sense because you don't have to because he does so much damage and takes no damage and everything has such a short cooldown. There's so many buttons to press. At least, again, the dangerous point with someone like this is the skill ceiling is so high because you can do these combos really cleanly and it does take skill to play Cassante at a very high level. The problem is playing him at not that high a level, you're an absolute meat shield that can run into the back line and completely take over games. I don't know how Riot fixes him. I think Cassante is only going to get further and further into being the most broken champion we have ever seen on the Rift in the history of League of Legends, but... They'll probably have even more insane champions when 2030 rolls around. But that's it today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. Thank you, you beautiful people, for hanging out as always. And we'll catch you on that flippity flip.